We are live and we're going to start in one minute. We're just going to wait for one minute, we'll wait for all the attendees to join in, and then we can start. Do you have any idea what the number of attendees is? We're already so far. Low, so I will, I will, uh, we will see, we will have that numbers coming in. So you could tell us if we're chatting, just to watch, uh, help us watch our words. I think I should start. So hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to DigiPay 2020, the future of digital payments summit, KSA edition. I hope all the attendees are having a good time attending the previous session. And my name is Varsha and I'm from Kalish Times. Moving on to the next session for today, uh, which is a panel discussion. And the topic for the panel discussion is the big payment debate. And uh, bring in, bringing in some uh, top payments and business leaders on the way ahead for digital payments in the region and asking them to share their views on the various aspects from infrastructure scalability to cybersecurity issues and many others. Well, uh, the moderator for today's panel discussion, we have Mr. Khalil Alami. He is the CEO uh, for Teller. Just to give you all a short introduction for Mr. Khalil. Uh, Khalil has more than two decades of experience in the financial service sector, including 18 years in the payment and card industry. With a focus on payment infrastructure and system implementation, he brings deep knowledge of industry structure with emphasis on card processing and settlement, the four-party system, international payments architecture, electronic and mobile payments, consumer touch points, and network security. So welcome, Mr. Khalil. It's an absolute honor to have you on boarded. And all the gentlemen, uh, welcome uh, or to DigiPay 2020. Uh, I would request Mr. Khalil to please start. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Varsha. Thank you for the nice introduction. Um, I'm honored yes. to be here uh, sitting among uh, um, uh, very distinguished gentlemen, industry leaders in the payments uh, in Saudi, in the region. Um, and um, I'm, I'm very excited about this uh, big payment debate. Uh, we are here we're joined by uh, Mr. Ali Al-Imran, who is the CIO of Arab National Bank in Saudi, uh, Dr. Tamar al Tuni, who is the Vice President um, of uh, Digital Services and Devices, and also the CCO of the e-wallet uh, from Etisalat UAE. Uh, we are also joined by Mr. Faisal Al-Rashoudi, the Vice President, Head of Digitization and Automation of Bank Al Jazeera in Riyadh, as well as uh, Mr. Yahya Pandor, who is the CIO of Fine Hygienic Holding. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I am honored to be moderating today uh, this uh, uh, insightful debate. Um, you all bring something uh, different to the table. And uh, today, uh, what I would like to do um, is uh, have this a conversation, uh, more of a conversational setup, more than uh, a, a Q&A. Um, so uh, what I would like to do is have, have you each give a quick intro while at the end of the intro answering, you know, a question about why are the digital payments, um, you know, the need for all businesses today in Saudi Arabia? Um, and how does that relate to what is going on on the ground uh, in, in Riyadh? So I'll start off uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Faisal Rashoudi and then we'll go around. Thank you, uh, Mr. Faisal. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much. And I am very honored to be uh, with you in this uh, panel. Uh, my name is Faisal Rashoudi. I am the head of uh, automation and digitalization in Bank Al Jazeera. I have been in Bank Al Jazeera now almost two years running this role. Now, uh, 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 response to your question, why digitalization is becoming more uh, a trend and important in, in KSA? Because uh, uh, from my perspective, uh, it's uh, a customer uh, uh, need and customer requirement. This is the expectation of our customer to make sure that they are going to the uh, 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 journey that they, they want to do uh, uh, when it comes to the financial transaction. So this is just, uh, a quick response on why we, we have to focus on digitalization moving forward. Thank you very much, Faisal. Dr. Tamer, from your view, uh, we heard from Mr. Faisal that the customer is driving this force. What are your, what, what are, what are your thoughts on this uh, digital payments need in, uh, in KSA? Thank you, Khalil. It's indeed an honor joining you all. Uh, I'm heading the digital services and smart devices, and at the same time, I'm the CCO for eWallet, which is a stored value account 
uh, payment scheme for the UAE. I have the privilege for working closely in technology and uh, mainly changing the customer behavior by making technology simpler and more convenient to customers. When it comes to digital payment, it's a, it's a universal need. So, uh, and we have seen lots of changes in customer behavior and it achieves three main things. Number one, it helps the businesses to grow further. So it opens more window and room for getting more diversified uh, uh, business, getting customers to adopt certain uh, services that was not possible without the digital payment. Additionally, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a security element. Carrying cash has its cost, whether for business or consumer. So this is one of, uh, one of the, the main points. And finally, it helps in faster delivery of certain services. So these are the main things that we believe that digital uh, payments and digital services would help. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. Uh, Mr. Ali, uh, another perspective from another banker in the group before I move on to the e-commerce leader. Um, so, Mr. Ali, can you tell us more uh, on your thoughts? So let's talk about uh, uh, digital. Digital, uh, so from my perspective, is nothing but another wave of, uh, of automation using the current set of uh, uh, emerging or uh, uh, contemporary technologies. Uh, so uh, I see uh, there are uh, I see it uh, uh, interest in customer experience. Uh, many financial institutions are giving this uh, special attention, uh, and uh, I agree that uh, uh, the market and the customers uh, expect this to be. Uh, they expect more performance in this area. Okay, uh, to use uh, to use the term. Uh, so, but uh, customer experience should not end up um, uh, what they call it uh, 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 confirming uh, the infrastructure phase of a financial institution. Uh, because we as banks, we are infrastructures, we are balance sheets, we are uh, uh, delivery uh, uh, chain. Uh, so. Uh, this uh, we should not over we should uh, customer experience should not make from the infrastructure of us uh, more dominant uh, and uh, more let us say official okay great uh, so we, we uh, by just making this infrastructure uh, 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 more frictionless or more efficient Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's a great response. Uh, this should not be the ultimate contribution of, of uh, the current wave of uh, uh, um, uh, customer experience uh, uh, attention. Uh, so we see also interests in uh, payments, uh, and uh, payments are very much needed. Uh, and we're talking here specifically uh, about uh, uh, about e-wallets and instant payments. Uh, e-wallets, uh, sorry? So I was just going to say, it's, that's a great answer because this is actually going to get us into the next section of the, uh, of the conversation where e-wallets, banks versus fintechs, and what is that big debate like? And so, then I'll uh, stop here and I'll leave it. Uh, yes, uh, okay. I, I will. I will. I will let you in on uh, the the next area. But before then, I'd like to hear from uh, Yahya. Uh, what are your thoughts on this trends? You know, being from an e-commerce platform or or actually more of a traditional distribution business going into this, um, can you tell us more about what are your thoughts on the um, digital payments need in, in KSA? And then I will follow up with another question after that. Yeah, so uh, firstly, honored to be here. Thank you very much. And I'll try and keep this very brief. But uh, I, I look at two ways. One is the consumer, because we're an FMCG company. And fine is across this region. And um, it's going to sound very bad. But uh, fortunately for us, COVID has been a great lesson in how to adapt your business very, very quickly. Um, because people went crazy for tissues, toilet papers, the masks behind us. And so we had to change our business very quickly. So very quickly, um, one is the consumer side. Um, I think the distinguished panel here said it probably they want digital pay. I'm a consumer. I want digital payments. I want to use my phone. I want to use my card. I want to be contactless and I want to get out of the store very quickly. So consumer demand is driving that. And remember that everybody's paranoid now about handling money and handling credit cards. So people want to use digital payments. 
from my perspective, as a company perspective, I think Dr. Ali Amran uh, said it very well, um, we're also demanding that from our suppliers. We're migrating everything to the cloud. Cloud technology doesn't take into equation of manual payments and manual paperwork. So again, we are now slowly telling our suppliers they also need to digitize very quickly so that they can work within our systems and our infrastructure. Thank, thank you, Yahya. And um, you know, we've heard from uh, everyone in, in this group saying you know, the consumer is driving this. And um, I agree with that. And at the same time, we heard from Mr. Ali saying you know, that should not be the only thing that is driving that. Um, at the same time, um, yeah, yeah, you know, we talked, I would like to shed some light on findguard.me, which just launched in the middle of the COVID, you know, delivering those masks to everybody. How do you think the social media um, influence um, influences the digital buying activities of the consumer from your perspective? Um, I think it it's influences, if I'm honest with you, 100%. And I tell you why, because, you know, you're a consumer. Um, if you want to buy, if you have a baby or you have a... Uh, just let's use a baby as an example. If you want to buy some baby food, typically now mothers at home or fathers at home or nannies will first Google that particular product. And then they will look at the reviews of that product. And then typically they then go to Instagram to look at people who are promoting that product and to get their views. So for us, social media is, is without doubt, it's, it's, it's uh, the leverage of our account. You know, we, we have influencers. We have influencers who are into fashion. We have influencers who are into Arab culture. We have influencers who are Olympic athletes. That's how far um, it goes. And I'll tell you why, this is, I'll, I'll keep this very, very brief, but you know, if you want to buy a mask before, as an example, you'd go to a store, you would try it on and you would, you know, be part of the sales process and the theater of the store. I call it the theater of the store. Those days are pretty much finished. People want the theater of online. They want to see somebody talk about the product, how it fits, and they want that theater online. So we've had to adopt our selling methods to produce that theater online, as I call it. And I think the other thing that's become very apparent is cleanliness and sterilization. Um, when I go to a bank, as an example, and this is all about banks, it's very rare that I go to a bank, but when you do, um, you expect cleanliness in that bank. You want to talk to the teller behind the thing. You want to clean your hands and the cash that you get has to be clean. So I think, yeah, from my perspective, 100% social media influence has definitely influenced the way that we purchase things. Great, thank you. Um, we've heard, uh, you know, about the consumer. We've heard about the customer journey. We've heard about a lot of things that, from customer centric. I know A and B, our national bank, is a pioneer in the digital payment space. Um, so I'd like to ask uh, the two bankers with us here, and we'll start with uh, Ali. Um, so there is about a thirty-five percent uh, branch banking penetration rate in the kingdom, while there is over eighty percent to eighty-five percent in smartphone penetration. What are your thoughts on that? You know, we've heard about, uh, you know, some, the beginning of this debate and let's talk about uh, about that with uh, Ali and then we move on to uh, Faisal. Oh, OK, uh, I think in a recent survey that we are all, we, that we might all be familiar with. Uh, so c customers were asked uh, if uh, uh, if they uh, wish to deal with a, with a with a bank that does not have uh, branches and 70 percent said they would leave that bank. OK, uh, so uh, so banking by nature is a, um, uh, is, a is a personal service. Uh, so there is a, the, the price of a mistake there. The cost of a mistake is high and customers expect advice. Uh, so just to reduce the, 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 the cost of decisions. Uh, so uh, what uh, what is the nature of the future uh, of branch uh, is something that is uh, bank dependent. Uh, so it might, uh, the definition might vary depending on on a bank. Uh, so uh, in Saudi, we see most of the traffic going to to mobile. Uh, so this uh, this will increase uh, over time, uh, and uh, uh, a, a branch density uh, will is definitely reducing. Great. Great. Uh, thank you, Ali. Um, Faisal, Al Jazeera Bank is very well known to be fintech friendly. Um, and what are your thoughts? Uh, yani, uh, as Ali mentioned, uh, clearly that uh, banks is moving toward uh, a smartphone and digital uh, channels to serve their customer. Now, uh, 
before I respond, we just, I need to differentiate between the type of customer. So we have retail customer and we have corporate customer. Now this is uh, 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 clearly defined the percentage that how we can move forward on the trend of digitalization. Now, uh, retail customer um, uh, in KSA, I think, uh, as you have mentioned, um, more of their services and more of their functions is done via uh, digital channels. Now, in corporate, uh, uh, the journey just started. Uh, banks are investing too, too, too much in that. And here where we want to capitalize on the fintech companies uh, with the new solution and with the new platform that can serve those customers in, in, in a fast uh, manner. Uh, I think the smart banks uh, should uh, focus on, as I told you, on the client type, uh, utilizing the branches, um, whether, whatever the percentage, on uh, having the meetings with the client, having the advisory moving forward. So uh, I think uh, deciding the percentage will definitely uh, uh, depend on the uh, full strategy, on the power of the technology uh, moving forward. Uh, uh, when it comes to the bank infrastructure and the partnership with the fintech. Great, thank you. Um, so the technology, you, we, we saw a lot of digital wallets seem to be the new trend. Uh, we've seen STC Pay, we've seen, you know, uh, Bayan Pay and other things, uh, other wallets that are rolling out in the market. Um, we see SAMA issuing uh, uh, regulations early in 2020 about, uh, you know, to governing the market. Uh, to be honest, it's, it's been a, um, a pioneering journey. Uh, we've seen Sama do great things that, uh, you know, are unparalleled around, around the region. Um, uh, you know, issuing new licenses as well uh, for wallets. So um, I'd like to ask Dr. Tamer, who is uh, 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 running as uh, the e-wallet uh, um, uh, for its Salat, what, what, what is the driving force behind this new trend? And what do you think that the um, influence on the digital buying behaviors of consumers is? Very good question. Uh, first, I think we have seen uh, what uh, the level of development that's happening in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia is witnessing a very strong development area across different industries. And in order to bring businesses closer to consumer, digital payment is a must. So as ha has been the debate has been discussed right now is that it's not only about the consumer alone, it's also about the consumer and business. And, and the beauty of digital payment is how to bring consumer and business closer to, to each other with similar to what Ali mentioned clearly about a frictional transaction that is convenient and secure. And all of this requires the right infrastructure, whether it's from networks, whether it's from cloud, whether it's from AI or even blockchain in order to ensure that the customer gets a proper service that is always on and always secure, it doesn't fail, and it can easily replace the current legacy cash flow system. Great, thank you, thank you, Dr. Tamer. Um, I'd like to move on to talking about, you know, fintechs and um, how we know that they are helping the growth of the payment industry. You know, we've seen many of them provide new services, features that are more agile than the, the than the banks. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, um, fintechs need to operate and collaborate with the banks. They cannot operate on their own. Um, so I'd like to ask um, uh, Ali, uh, what kind of uh, projects or initiatives have been launched by A and B in this regard? Uh, okay, it happened that A and B uh, serves most uh, the largest number of fintechs uh, among uh, uh, Saudi banks, uh, starting from the uh, first largest and the most uh, uh, ambitious uh, STC pay. Uh, so. Uh, we worked together with these uh, fintechs to develop uh, uh, their uh, banking uh, uh, services. So we are the uh, the we pro we are the bank uh, backbone, uh, and uh, we had to develop services that uh, for, for that are launched in Saudi for the first time. Uh, so, like for example, uh, cash withdrawal from ATMs by QR code. Uh, so nice. A and B is still the only service of providing this, and we developed it in collaboration with uh, with the CCP. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, we are widening the scope of uh, of collaboration. Uh, so uh, with uh, with uh, fintechs and, and different uh, 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 groups uh, in different areas. Sure. 
Um, thank you, Ali. Faisal, um, Al Jazeera Bank, like I said, it's fintech friendly. What are new projects or initiatives that are, you are launching with uh, with fintech? Yeah, um, uh, Bank Al Jazeera again, yani, as as uh, you have said clearly, uh, partnership with the fintech company is a, a key milestone and a key strategic objective uh, within the bank. Uh, we have a couple of partnership with the with the with the fintech company to. As I told you, to serve the corporate corporate client or the SMEs, because we see there is a big opportunity uh, on on that domain. Uh, 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 generally, uh, we are uh, again uh, continue to explore those fintech company because um, uh, we believe in uh, there is an opportunity to partnership with them. So uh, this is it for my side. Great, thank you very much. Um, uh, I would like to go back just uh, on the last point on e-wallets to Dr. Tamer. Um, there is a challenge. Now we see, you know, Mada Sadad, STC Pay, Bayan Pay, all these wallets that are launching. Um, what is the interoperability challenge that we will see? Uh, or or how, what are your thoughts on the interoperability between all these wallets that we will see in the market? Okay. Uh, interoperability is a must for digital wallets to exist. Uh, you cannot... You cannot exist and serve the customers in a closed environment. And the customer expectation, and in order for the customer to change the behavior, he's expecting whatever digital solution would be available can be used anywhere. So whether he can use it online, he can use it with merchants, he can use it in international money remittance, and it should be accepted wherever he goes. And this helps in reducing the cost for the business and reducing the cost for the consumer. So this is one part. The other part is that interoperability is not only internal. It's also external. The wallets should be able to accept money from outside. So earlier, there were only two products. One is bank transfers and the other is uh, cash pickup. So now with the grow of wallets, wallets should be able to accept from other wallets, whether internal or external. So to, to conclude, without interoperability, uh, digital payment solutions will not have uh, uh, mass adoption and mass uh, development. Great, great, and I believe uh, you know this is uh, this interoperability should be, in my opinion, a national initiative. And I believe some there's something cooking where you know all these wallets should be able to interoperate, uh, e even not only on a local level, but maybe on a GCC level as well. Um, um, thank you very much, Dr. Tamil. Uh, yeah, yeah, fine. Um, is um, you know is very well known as a, as a as a giant or viewed as a giant. But we all know that it has, uh, you know, it it used to be a traditional uh, distribution business, uh, let's say to say to say the least. Um, but we saw in COVID times how um, it has transformed quite quickly into an e-commerce um, um, uh, adapted uh, business. Um, can you tell us about what was the one thing um, that you can advise traditional businesses that want to move into the e-commerce world, which are you know quite extensive at the moment? What is your advice for them, from your view, from your experience? Uh, don't be scared to make mistakes. We made uh, <laughs> many mistakes. You can have a, uh, you can do an MBA, you can do a thesis. Nothing will prepare you for this. Nothing. Just be clear. Nothing will prepare you for this. So we made many mistakes. We opened a website. It was slow. It was clunky. The payment options were very poor. The products weren't clear. So now we're at that stage where, you know, the last website we've opened is uh, called The Fine Shop um, and it works superbly, but we've learned the mistakes. So my advice is don't be scared to make mistakes. Um, I think what's, what the lessons we learned was simplicity. As a consumer, I want to go there, I want to select my products and I want to go and pay. Now, when I want to go pay, we have an international commerce site. So before we would just have GCC payments, just as an example, but actually, we found a lot of international people were coming to our sites and we wouldn't accept American Express. We wouldn't accept, uh, you know, other uh, PayPal and other payment terms. So we had to work with partners to make sure that that works properly. So again, understand that if you go e-commerce, people will enter your website from all sorts of countries, from as far away as the West Coast of America to Australia to buy your products. So my advice is keep it simple. Uh, make the products clear, and most importantly, make the payment process, you know, you're, you're all in banking, so make it as clear as possible. If, if it's 10 dirhams plus VAT, please put the VAT on the payment at the end. And you know, it's these things that annoy customers, and I think the final two things before I shut up is um, delivery options. 
delivery options, people don't realize it's highly complicated. I mean, if you live in Riyadh and you live on this road and you have this number, uh, believe it or not, you have to make sure that that address exists in your system because that helps calculate the payment options. And the final thing is returns. So I think a lot of people forget this very, very important aspect. If someone's going to spend 200 dirhams on our products, and I don't know, 10 percent of it's not not working properly. And people don't want to wait two, three weeks for returns. They really don't. They expect either an immediate return or at most they're happy to wait 48 hours for a return of that money. So I think there's a, a connect between consumer and banking that has to come together where they can look at what's best for the customer. And actually, don't be fooled. The customer knows the good platforms. Don't be fooled. Even we do as customers. Amazon yeah. is great because sure. Amazon is easy. <laughs> there's no other yeah. reason. It's, it's easy. So there yeah, there's a lot of weight on the trust of the consumer into the uh, into the uh, platform that he's buying from, Correct. and I think that you know that that is I think fueled by how easy is it to return something that I bought that I don't like or that is not what is promised, um, mm -hmm. and how easy can I return it? And that's what the Amazon delivers, and that's why it's like number one um, a portal. Um, I'd like to move to some Q and A from the audience, um, and uh, before my last question, um, so. Um, this is probably more for the bankers. Uh, what is the growth in digital payments between 2019 and 2020 as an impact of COVID-19? Um, Ali, would you like to answer that? Uh, I don't have uh, figures uh, right now. Okay, uh, how about you, Faisal? Can you shed some light on uh, what, what general uh, growth looks like in digital payments between 2019 versus 2020 as a result of COVID? Uh, I'm sure it's uh, very high, but again, I am uh, like Ali. I don't have the figures. So but I'm sure. So I, yeah, I, I can, I can, I can give you some, some uh, unofficial numbers. Um, somewhere it's in the high double-digit growth, uh, especially with the Sama initiative, where you know cash is no longer, or, or let's say, put it another way, where all the bakalas, all the, all the different businesses have to accept digital payments. So that I'm sure spiked up quite rapidly. Um, another question we have. Um, there are many ways to uh, change legacy uh, way of working of banking, uh, but uh, we should also have to think differently for regulations perspective. Current regulations or compliance will no longer be valued with a new way of working of banking. What's your view? Um, anybody would like to shed some light on this answer? Um, I, I, what I can say from, 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 from a Saudi perspective, you know, the Vision 2030 is, uh, is, is very clear. Um, the SAMA regulations that were issued in um, uh, February, I believe, 2020, in the Q1 of 2020, are fabulous. They're very dynamic. Uh, they are very inclusive of all kinds of fintechs, all kinds of banking uh, services that are up and coming. I believe they're doing a very fabulous and great job um, in being inclusive. The sandbox that they've launched is open to everyone. Um, and I think, um, I believe these regulations, uh, like the uh, um, uh, audience has asked, uh, yes, they are they weren't current but i believe now they are more current and they are very dynamic and if you notice that sam is taking a huge initiative um uh, especially during COVID, in trying to adapt and create new updated versions of them and with the with the with the with especially with the establishment of fintech saudi and and, and uh, the other initiatives as well uh, i'll move to question three also from, yeah to add to this point uh, as per a report from kpmg uh, it has been seen 18 percent year over year in terms of investment in fintech to reach to around 20 billion US dollars yes. in Saudi Arabia. So, so everybody's pointing towards these investments and, and as you mentioned clearly. Uh, Khalil, uh, Khalil, just to add a statement here to, to ask the question uh, about, uh, about uh, regulations versus uh, digitalization. I think that digitalization will be driven by, uh, by three forces. Uh, the first force is internal to financial institutions, if we talk about the financial sector. Uh, so it's the appetite, the will, the direction uh, that is uh, uh, specific to each and every institution. Uh, so the other uh, force is regulations. Uh, so uh, in the last period, we got uh, some exciting uh, digitalization uh, of friendly uh, regulations, like for example, now or promissory notes for loans uh, uh, can be uh, done uh, digitally, will have authorized uh, 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 digital signatures, etc. cetera. Uh, so the, th the last drive, which is sometimes uh, uh, ignored uh, is the digitalization of the public sector. 
Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, so how would I be uh, uh, what enabled the customer? to what enabled the regulation like EKYC, uh, allowing customers to open, uh, to establish uh, relations uh, with banks uh, online, uh, is the availability of absure uh, 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 customer authentication uh, and uh, uh, Saudi post uh, exposing API uh, and uh, uh, Yaqeen services and similar services from Al Ilm, which come from uh, uh, it's like wrapping the national data center by by API. Uh, so the next wave of digitalization, which could be AKYC for for corporates to allow online enrollment or a fully digital uh, uh, long transaction like a housing loan will definitely demand uh, more digitalization from the public sector. So more sure. uh, uh, government uh, wrapped uh, API. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Um, and thank you, uh, Dr. Tam uh, and everyone. So uh, I have another question from the audience and maybe Yahya, you can shed some light on that. So it says digital payment acceptance among SMBs is crucial for economies like ASA and UAE. Do you think that fintechs can play a key role uh, here to support the SMBs to speed up um, this is option? Yeah, I, I, 100%, without a doubt. I mean, one of the challenges we see is it's easy to work with Panda Retail and the bigger companies. They're easy to work with. They're aligned with the fintech companies and the works. We have customers in the middle of Jeddah, in the middle of Riyadh, in the middle of Al Khobar, somewhere far. And that particular customer, he wants to become digital. He wants to become digital, and but he doesn't know how to. And I know that sounds very simple, and, and forgive my simplicity. Um, but you know, and they still pay cash, and, and I think they're crying out for help from banks. I'm just being, you know, I'm not a banker, and forgive me, but they're crying out for help from banks. I think these small, medium businesses who are the backbone of of our industry here in the Middle East, um, they really want the banks to say, hey, this is how you do it, and these are your charges, and this is how it's better for your business. And and most of the times, they just don't understand that the world is changing very quick. So. Um, I'm not going to speak on behalf of banking, but I will speak on behalf of our um, distributors and people who really want to adopt digital technology. I can tell you now, they are, I'll give you an example. There was one customer in here in Dubai, and he was a fairly average customer. And we were starting to get frustrated on why can't you take digital payments? And he showed us the paperwork from the banks. It was maybe 10, 12 pages of authorization, approvals, then they have to come and do an inspection. Then they have to come and do another inspection to put in the technology. Then they have to test the technology. Then they have to get sign off. And, and he said, I've been waiting nine weeks. I mean, from my perspective, and again, it's not criticizing the banking industry, but it's just to say, there must be a better way to make it easy for these small, medium businesses. That's, that's just my yeah. honest point. Yeah, and I, and I think COVID uh, put that to the test. So um, we have about four minutes left to go. So I'd like to just uh, do a quick round robin. Uh, what is the one trend that we all should look for um, in the uh, digital payment industry? Given just a quick answer, we'll start with Dr. Tamer and, and move around. Okay, I will get out from the consumer and humans is that the globally there is uh, around 21 billion Internet of Things devices that are connected. And this is three times the world population. So the number one trend to look for, as this is going to grow to 34 billion by 2025, is the machine-to-machine -machine payment. So Internet of Things is going to go beyond only interacting. They are going also to do uh, payments. So you'll find your fridge ordering food and paying at the same time without any human intervention. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Tamer. Uh, Faisal, uh, what is the one trend we should look for? Uh, again, uh, we need to always uh, think that the customer in control now. It's no, no more the organization uh, driving that. Uh, we have to move and you have to differentiate between uh, the customer type that you are, uh, you are looking for. That's it for my side. Thank you, Faisal. Uh, what about you, Ali? So when it comes to uh, to payments, as uh, adding the social aspect of it, uh, so I think what uh, what social media is, uh, is is doing is adding payments on top of uh, the financial relations, on top of the social relations. We have an opportunity to do the opposite. Great, great answer. Thank you, uh, Yahya. Your thoughts? I, I put the it down trend. to 
to, to one, two things very quickly uh, as a consumer now, uh, speed and security. When you're there making a transaction, it's got to be quick. Um, no one likes hanging around for 30 seconds waiting for the circle to say, waiting to pay. Um, so for me, it's got to be very, very quick. And with 5G and stuff from Etisalat coming soon, that's going to make that rapid. And the other thing is security. You know, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, there are people in this world who are unethical and would like to hack your credit card and your payment details. I mean, that's just reality. Let's not hide. So I think speed and security for me are the two things that will really push this uh, more and more. Great. I'd like to give my, my two cents. Is I, I believe that the gold mine or uh, where we should be focusing on is the consumer, like we all talked about, but the user experience, the customer experience of an app or a website, because it's all digital, should be very quick and smooth. And I think, yeah, you touched about, uh, on that a little bit, and Dr. Tami touched uh, on it a little bit. Um, I believe that uh, you know, the, the, the consumer in the GCC in, in Saudi Arabia is young. So, and, and as we go along, they're more sophisticated. We have less of their attention span. So the attention span of the consumer is going to be maybe one minute if we're lucky. And in that one minute, we have to give them a smooth experience using their app, going forward, paying securely, fast, and with, with utmost service where you know they don't like it, they can return it. So I'd like to leave you all with this thought about having the user CX UX as the gold mine of the digital payments. And uh, I thank you very much for all your contributions. We have, you have given us great insight uh, from such distinguished uh, gentlemen and, and business leaders in this industry. I thank you very much. I appreciate your time. And thank you for the audience. Thank you for Khalish Times and for this hosting this beautiful debate. And I think, I hope everybody benefited from. Uh, Varsha, back to you. Yes, thank you so much, Khalil. It was an amazing and a very, very informative session that we had today. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, it was an absolute honor to have you all here. Uh, well, thank you to all the attendees to attend this session. Uh, I hope you all had a great time and requesting all the attendees to please join in the next session. We have uh, the digital payments way forward uh, for the FMC industry, which is starting at 12.10. So I would request all the attendees to please join in the next session. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.